August 2018 I published a video on Direct Live, the initial version, and liked it a lot. The software was a bit nerdy and looked rather dated, but that was ok, it got the job done. Now there is a version 2 and it looks a lot better. As I have said in the past, room correction should be approached with caution. Many room correction systems I have heard, including really expensive ones, might cure some room modes but usually at the expense of phase distortion caused by the equalizer circuits used to kill those room modes. They often use poor digital signal processing that has a clear negative effect on the sound quality. Another factor is that given the nature of sound waves travelling in a room, the equalizer settings differ for about every spot in the room and thus always have to be a compromise. The first system that really impressed me was Direct Live when I reviewed it on the NAD AV receiver that now is part of my AV setup. The main difference with the other systems I have heard is that they don't try to equalize the room but compensate for the transfer function of the speakers and the room. That not only involves changes in the frequency domain but also in the time domain. More and more the leading technologies in audio are about time resolution and that is often based on research done on our auditory system. I will keep looking for other room correction systems, as I have done the last year or two. But I will not spend time on a system that, in my ears, do not perform well enough. I have to be economical with time. The licensing approach of Direct Live seems to have changed a bit. You just download the Direct Live version 2 from the Direct site and register on the site with your email address. Then when you start up the system it scans your network for devices that carry a license. Brands like Arcam, Audio Control, Dataset, Theta, Digital, Emotiva, Mini DSP, NAD, Sonic Studio Amara, Storm Audio and Stream Unlimited already offer Dirac in their products. I will use the NAD 758 version 3 AV receiver for this video. Time to start up Direct Live version 2. It immediately found the NAD. When I click on the NAD logo, the software proceeds to the choosing of the recording device, the mic. I could have used the NAD mic connected to the mic input of the front of my receiver or one of the mics in my laptop, but in my case using the Mini DSP You Make One mic I already had was easier. Both the NAD supplied mic and the UMIC one will give about the same results since both use a calibration file that tells the processor what deviations they have. The unique calibration file for the UMIC one mic you can simply load by selecting the calibration file downloaded from the Mini DSP site. There are two calibration files, one if you use the mic pointed at the speakers and one when you use the mic pointed upwards. I prefer the latter since it measures a more diffuse field. The next screen lets you set the output level and mic sensitivity. First set the volume control of your amplifier way down. Then click on the play symbol of the left channel. Now raise the level on your amplifier and the master output of the software until you see the level bar get into the green range. Since the efficiency of different speakers in a surround set may differ, you use the master output to set a general level and use the individual outputs to lower the output of those speakers that are more efficient and thus louder than the rest. The level in the room is relatively loud when measuring, but if your guts say it's too soft or too loud, 
set it to a level that makes sense to you. Be sure to dampen or eliminate noise sources in the room. In my case the espresso machine switched off automatically and disturbed the measurement. Other sources can be resonating panels, cat doors, doorbells and so on. In one aspect Dirac does not differ from other room correction systems. It needs to apply an average approach since sound behavior in a room differs from spot to spot. If you measure the behavior at several points close together, that small area will be corrected more precisely at the expense of about any other place in the room. But if you take many measurements throughout the room, the result will be less optimal but more equal throughout the room. Direct Life suggests you choose between chair and sofa, where with the sofa you get the options focused and wide image. The placement of the mic is not super critical, with the exception of the initial position. You might opt for a wider or closer placement as long as you do realize that this will lead to a wider or narrower hotspot, where the wide hotspot will be less compensated. The first measurement is the most critical since it sets the starting parameters for all other measurements and has to be taken on the central spot at ear level. When you have placed the mic there, you click measure selected position. I have a 7.1 setup and channel after channel will be sent to sweep tone, then a limited sweep for the sub and an extra sweep at a minutely different sampling rate that is used for timing information. Let's go. Apparently I have set the playback level too high, so I go back to the volume calibration page and reduce the volume. I could also have used the volume control on the AV receiver. And back to the measuring page to start the same initial measurement again. Notice the highlighted speaker name of the measured speaker along the bottom. If you didn't hear the second last measurement, that was the subwoofer and those low tones might not be reproduced by the system you watched this video on. After that the measurements are shown and most likely look awful. Don't worry, that's normal. You then select a second measurement point, place the mic accordingly and click measure selected position again. Simply repeat this process until all points are measured and then click on proceed to filter design. Now it's time to set the sound character you like. You might think that a flat frequency response is what you want, but that's not the case. First, your recording most likely take into account the influence the room modes have on the sound. Once these are reduced, you might end up with too little energy in the low frequencies. Furthermore, you don't want to totally change the sound character of your stereo. Direct Live proposes target responses, but feel free to experiment. Most equipment that do Direct Live offer two or more memory positions to store different settings in. During experimenting, this is handy for comparison of several settings, and later on you could, for instance, have a mellow setting for classical music, a somewhat brighter setting for rock, and a bass heavy setting for movies. Let's start with the sub by selecting it in the right column. 
The thick line is the target, the thin line is the measured response. I like the target so let's go to the center speaker. This is a smaller speaker so there is no point to have it go that deep. Therefore I adjust the target to have it roll off from 80 Hz down. Let's also correct the strange bump at the top and raise the speech area a bit since all dialogue goes through the center speaker. Next the left and right speakers. These are the speakers that normally do the left and right channels of my stereo setup 1. So the left and the right speaker outputs of my AV receiver are not connected. Left and right pre-out are sent to the power amp input of the amp in my stereo setup 1. These speakers go deep so I want to use that and give it a boost I mentioned earlier. This is what I came up with. The surround and back speakers are small speakers and thus should roll off from 80 Hz down. When proceed to filter export appears in the lower right corner, the filters have been calculated and the result can be evaluated graphically. Let's start with the sub that now must have this curve. Compared to the uncorrected version you can see it's less peaky. Then the center speaker that also shows a more steady curve especially when compared to the uncorrected version. The same can be said of the left and right channels that clearly show the modest bump below 150 Hz I wanted. Also the surround and back channels show a lot more even. The only thing left is to upload the filters to the AV receiver. As you can see I have already experimented with different settings but let's upload the filters we have just seen to the first slot using the same name. For which I used the date and abbreviated extra extra low in Dutch. After about two minutes the filters are uploaded and can be chosen from the AV receiver. For future use you can save the set of measurements. If you are not satisfied with the tonal balance simply start up Direct Live again, load the project and go to the filter design page. There make adjustments and write them to the memory of the AV receiver or amplifier. Do use moderate levels when doing so not to kill the drivers of your speakers and always compare the non-direct live situation for reference. As you might have seen in the previous direct live video I like it a lot. Now the software is set up more consumer friendly while more and more brands add direct to their equipment I expect it to become very popular. With the NED receiver comes a version that works up to 500 Hz. I use the extended version that comes at 99 euros and does the whole audio spectrum. Currently little stereo equipment comes with Direct Integrated but this is a matter of time. Already a quality all in one streamer and amp was shown to me under embargo that included Direct and I am currently working on a digital art only streamer with built in Direct. Perhaps this might not be what people with a fully acoustically optimized man cave need, but those that are happily married with a music loving spouse and a proper stereo in the living room will. So I will keep tracking Direct Live and the products that are equipped with it. If you don't want to miss that, make sure that you are subscribed to this channel or follow me on the social media so you know when new videos are released. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and many thanks to all that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If you feel like supporting my work, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.